So again, I'm Sandra Cordero and I did the Ellenbrook Fellowship in Children's Research at the Children's Hospital of Colorado. I specifically work at the Orthopedics Institute at the Children's Hospital, which is ranked one of the top pediatric orthopedic programs in the nation according to the U.S. News and World Report. Specialists such as the surgeons, physical therapists, and physicians work together to, pro to provide the best possible treatments for each patient. Um, one unique aspect of this hospital is the gate analysis lab, which has 3D motion capturing cameras in order to evaluate the movement of each patient. Um, in addition, I worked with J Dr. Jason Stoneback. He's an orthopedic surgeon that specializes in trauma. So I retrospectively reviewed the clinical outcomes among children that underwent operative treatment um, for unstable femur fractures. And that's one of the cubicles that I worked at. And I also had various shadowing opportunities. The purpose of my project was to investigate the surgical outcomes or surgical complications and clinical outcomes of each operative treatment for unstable femur fractures and determine the effectiveness of some muscular bridge plating. The two other techniques we decided to focus on was titanium elastic nailing and trochanteric entry nailing. So we hypothesized that the complication rate would be higher in um, techniques that are used instead of SMP. So a little bit about some muscular bridge plating. It is a minimally invasive plating technique and ideal for unstable femur fractures because it provides maximum stability to support the length and rotation for each femur. This also promotes early weight bearing and mobilization and avoids the growth plate. So no concerns for osteonecrosis of the femoral head and growth arrests. We compared um, SMP to TENS which is weaker compared to both rigid nailing, which is the trochanteric entry nailing, um, and, and um, weaker, in, weaker than plate constructs. Thus, it does not provide any stability against shortening or rotation for when the fracture is healing. Um, so this, this technique is not ideal for unstable femur fractures. Lastly, trochanteric entry nailing is stronger than flexible nails because of its interlocking screws. However, um, oh, and it's also ideal for length unstable femur fractures, but this treatment is limited in the pediatric population because a child's canal must be large enough to accept the smallest diameter of these nails, and it also has a higher risk of growth arrests. Um, so basically, in my fellowship, I first had to set up the database on what variables I wanted to collect. The hospital used REDCap, the online database, to set up what the project or what variables to collect. Um, then I also did data collecting using pre-existing data, and we did this using EPIC, which is the online database where they keep all the patient records. And then I statistically analyzed these data to understand the strengths and limitations associated with each treatment. These are some of the variables we wanted to collect, including the initial diagnosis, procedure and post-operative complications and follow-ups. So our results. Um, so I learned that the average age and weight was highest in trochanteric entry nailing. This supports past studies because success has been noted in children that are near skeletal maturity and also uh, when used in heavier children. SMP had the highest surgical rate for length unstable fractures. This supports past studies as well. There have been reported, um, there have been few reported complications associated with um, SMP. And since this treatment provides the most stability and promotes faster healing, it's ideal for these complex fractures. Um, TENS had the highest surgical rate for stable femur fractures, and there have been few reports on unstable femur fractures treated with um, TENS because of the associated complications such as painful and prominent hardware. Thus you can see that there is a like surgical philosophy in the children's hospital depending on the fracture stability. We also looked at the need for physical, physical therapy by group. We thought that the need for physical therapy by group would be higher in the other groups instead of SMP. However, there was no difference in the need for physical therapy. We also looked at the reoperation rate. We thought that the reoperation rate would be higher in TENS because of the associated complications such as painful and prominent hardware. However, there was no difference in the reoperation rate as well. 
So my job shadowing experience. Um, my favorite job shadowing experience has to be in the OR, where I witnessed hardware removal, and the patient had cerebral palsy, so she had four implants, um, two on her fibula and two on her tibia. And it was interesting because there was um, one orthopedic surgeon and three fellows that did the removal at the same time. So it's not what I expected um, op the operation room to be like. My learning experiences. I learned the process of clinical research from getting your project um, accepted to finding out what variables you want to collect and then um, statistically analyzing these results. This fostered my creativity because unlike the other summer interns, my database was not set up, so I had to review relevant literature to determine what variables would be useful and important to collect before um, I start my project. Um, in addition, I gained more confidence in myself. I say this because I was the youngest intern at the Children's Hospital of Colorado, which was quite overwhelming. However, I think I handled the situation well and I became more comfortable throughout the summer. This also helped me feel more comfortable in a work setting, especially the cubicle life. <laughs> but it also helped me learn more about taking responsibility and having more independence in the work setting. My internship impact. So I made connections within the Children's Hospital. They gave me the opportunity to come back next summer and apply through the hospital to continue my research. Um, or they gave me an opportunity to apply as a research assistant before going to um, professional schooling to get more clinical research um, experiences as well. Um, I also reflected on my career goals. I was debating again um, between medical school or optometry school, but because of the fact that I had the job shadowing opportunities, um, I shot an ophthalmologist and various medical doctors. I came to the conclusion that medical school is not for me. Lastly, I helped develop a foundation for future studies on femur fractures. My project was relatively new, um, but in future studies, we would want to evaluate the radiographs of the treated and untreated leg for femur fractures. So I'd like to thank my donor, Charles Ellenbrook, class of 77, the orthopedics department at the Children's Hospital, especially my supervisors, Patrick and Aaron, and my faculty sponsor and academic advisor, Craig Tepper. Thank you.